Are you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. Hello, guys. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Good people, welcome. By the way, I don't want to discriminate bad people. Welcome to our show as well. Anyone who want to learn more about marketing, welcome. Because today we are going to discuss about interesting topic, how to become a great marketer. And we are going to uh, divide step by step what you can do and how to go ahead. Because marketing is a quickly changing world. You need to adapt fast. We have many technologies, AI, many others, so we need to adapt them uh, in our strategies. And I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Colin Lepiscopo. How are you? Good, good. So glad to be here, Anatoly. Um, yeah, you're, you're right. Things uh, things move fast. You got you got to keep up uh, or be ahead uh, to yeah. be a great marketer. So yeah, for sure. Nice, Colin. Uh, before we start, just tell more about yourself, experience, background, and why you have these mountains on your background. How we can climb to these mountains? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I probably should have figured out what mountain this is before I put it in my background. I'm not. I'm not quite sure, but I will share something a little exciting. I have. I have a good friend. He's one of my best friends uh, uh, growing up, and he's he's on the Appalachian Trail right now. So I don't know if you know anything about hiking that. Uh, he's about to finish his triple crown, and uh, I think the Appalachian is the hardest of the three. So uh, he's, you know, I, I can't remember the, <clears throat> excuse me, I can't remember the first mountain that they hit, but it's the hardest one, uh, and and it's got one of our other, one of my other good friends, Jared, is is doing it with him. So shout out to them. But uh, I'll definitely, uh, maybe he knows what mountain this is. I can ask him after the show. Okay, okay. <laughs> he, he only gets signal uh, here and there, so uh, it's it's pretty crazy. So. Yeah, we can submit the name of mountains in the description. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about your yeah, background sure. experience and uh, why you decided to share with us about this important topic. Yeah, yeah. Good question. So, um, man, what am I? I'm a marketer. I'm a marketer just like anybody else. And, you know, somebody, somebody told, once told me that uh, there are no expert marketers. So, really, nobody knows what they're talking about. You know, and I, I kind of like that. But what you can become an expert in is testing. So I'm kind of a little bit of a, a testing nerd, a CRO nerd. Uh, I love data. Apparently, you know, I, I took a I took a test to. Uh, I love taking like personality tests or analysis and things like that. And so uh, one of my bosses had a new one. I said, "All right, I'll take this." It was like a culture index. So I take this culture index. And he's like, "Okay, you know, on the logic scale, you know, normally day to day you're at like an eight, and then when you go to a work environment, you go to like a 10. So you turn into Spock and I'm like, okay, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, a little bit of a data nerd, uh, but I, I love to be creative and I love the idea phase of a project. So if you have a, a full lifeline of a project, I love to be in the beginning in the brainstorm idea phase. So when I'm working with my team uh, or I'm working with right now with the, with the CEO, I'd love to like get in there and ideate and come up with ideas and then, and then throw those out and either test them or just see what what sticks if, if everybody likes it and, and we'll go with that so that's kind of where nice. i thrive right now i'm working at a company here i'm in san diego california and i'm local and uh, i'm kind of back in the office for the first time since covid which is a little interesting but it's fun i love it and i'm working at an e-bike company called flx and uh, i'm just having a lot of fun i feel i feel like i'm in silicon valley man because the e-bike industry is just, just crazy. It's like, you know, we've got we've got battery techs from other companies and they've got, you know, some of our old guys and we've, you know, it's like it, it's it's just it's 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 crazy. It's it's fun though. I love it. So nice, nice, yeah. nice. Love it, love it. And uh I like one word that you mentioned about to be creative. For me, it's most important thing in marketing because uh, so many generic messages uh, are there you know and it's hard to be in uh, customers uh, hearts minds you know by sharing totally the same and I see it's a big issue when companies learn competitors and do the same replicate them uh, marketing should be creative because nobody cares about the same message about uh, the same piece of content that we have online and I see when uh, 
uh, I often speak with clients who uh, can't get results for a few years and they ask me what's going on and I check out their content plan I check out what they do they do the same you know yeah. what uh, many other companies can do they don't care about customers about unique selling proposition about their strong size so mm -hmm. can you tell how to create the right marketing plan uh, I mean like to analyze uh, your uh, 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 unique selling proposition and uh, customers preferences yeah yeah absolutely I mean yeah you, you hit it on the head you know uh, before we talk about th that because that is a, I, we could talk probably for hours about just just yeah. the marketing plan and, and value proposition um, or unique selling proposition, right? We, I like to call it value proposition. It's the same thing, right? It's like, what distinguishes you? What, you know, what do you have that's exclusive and appealing to, to your, to your audience and figuring that out? Uh, and, um, yeah, man, uh, you know, I, I will say this with chat GPT, which I love, I have a lot of fun with chat GPT. We we're talking about this earlier. I like to catch it in mistakes and I sit there and argue with it and get it to admit that it had a mistake in its algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> which is just maybe yeah. like a, a new private hobby I have. And uh, I've got some, some, some little side projects that I'm, that I'm doing with chat TVT, but it, it can be a useful tool. But, you know, I was talking to some, some, some marketers online on, on LinkedIn. And I said, uh, you know, I actually am pretty excited about chat TPT. And it's not because I can sell you a bunch of prompts, which, you know, if you're interested in some prompts and how to kind of program it, like we could talk about that, but, you know, everybody's trying to figure out ways to monetize ChatGPT and all these other things. But what I'm excited about is everybody's going to be using it and their content's going to become even more vanilla and bland yeah. and basic and boring. And that is going to proliferate because what will happen is all of the late adopter brands and all of these other brands, they're just going to be not only copying their competitors and doing all this other copying, they're going to be copying like whatever the like not even copy but like whatever the output the chat gpt gives them they're gonna just like take it and literally copy paste it and put it. i mean you're probably gonna see websites that have like the gray background right if you copy out of chat gpt right it's got the like you know great you know what i'm talking about if you ever copied from chat gpt it's like got the gray background it's gonna be in R R roboto or whatever the, the font is you know I, I mean they're literally just gonna copy and paste content and all the content is gonna be the same out there so it's actually yeah. going to be a fantastic opportunity for any marketer out there that's like hey you know what we're gonna zag we're gonna zag and we're gonna stand out and you're gonna be able to distinguish your brand even that much more so uh, i'm actually excited about that uh to, but to answer your question that i mean that's one way that that could do your whole marketing plan is like we're gonna look at what everyone's doing. we're gonna we're gonna put things into chat gbt and you already know what everyone's gonna do and then do the opposite and then just do the opposite and stand out from that and uh, and that would be something awesome. Oh, Mohammed, he he loves the background, and he called us legends. So man, dude, real knows real. So thanks for that, bro. But uh, I will find out what the background is. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll look into this. I have no idea. Probably Yosemite or something. I guess. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's talk about this tool, ChatGPT. You know, I see. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, now I have some noise outside. I can't <laughs> impact to this noise, but. Anyway, all good, all good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, about this tool, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we got a lot of generic uh, text uh, that marketers can create with this tool, and I see it's a big issue, and uh, it's a big chance for many others because if you uh, write yourself, if you uh, research data, create something unique, you always beat any generic text because uh, uh, even more you know once i got uh, the message from a uh, big publication uh, about um, that stop uh, getting press releases because after uh, launching chat gpt they got uh, 10 times more uh, text generic text boring text and they have no time to check out you know <laughs> all this text and it's a big ch chance you know because google doesn't care about generic uh, context uh, users don't care it's not only about google linkedin uh, any other platform people want to get something new creative uh, as you mentioned in the beginning uh, you need to be creative and uh, ai tools can't create this text but ai can help 
to create this text. For example, you know, if I can't uh, create uh, the sentence or paragraph, I can ask, please help me. Uh, here are my points. Please uh, write something interesting. Uh, and that way, you, you can get results. Uh, even, uh, you know, once uh, I wrote the text and asked ChatGPT to edit this text, then I sent to my uh, proofreaders and asked them about the quality. They told me, wow, that's great. No, good quality. So if you can edit text, if you can... Um, get uh, some points that it's hard for you to create why not you can use this tool but you can generate text that everyone can do it you know so uh, yeah. it's boring it's not interesting uh, can you tell about other issues that chat gpt has and how to use in the right way <laughs> yeah yeah good question you know, you're absolutely right and you know as an seo guy you know it's not gonna work you know you might be able to and you probably maybe even have some stuff like this where you can give it some prompts and you know you can set it up and i've seen some pretty slick stuff too where it's like people are working and having it input things in a spreadsheet and they're like i had i i've i've trained it to you know or really kind of programming it in a way with prompts i programmed it in a way where now it's the output is what i want for blog posts and that works but i would say you still need to go in and and tweak some stuff because yeah you're going to get the generic output that everyone else is getting so even if you were able to you know give it keyboard density and the links the link backs and everything you wanted which which takes a lot of setup so uh some of the things that I've done uh, again, and, and you'll hear this from, you know, a lot of people that are really kind of deep in, in chat GPT, which is uh, that it's all comes down to the prompts and it all comes down to how you set things up and that's going to affect the output. And that, that really is true. Uh, right now the, when I was messing with it and, and I, I was just messing with the free version, I think there's a couple other versions. There's like a, there's a, a way to get to a beta version. I'll, I'll see if I remember the link to that. Um, but I know that there's a way to kind of get into into a beta version of it, which I don't know if a lot of people know about that, if that's still available, but I think it is. Or you can do the paid version. But I noticed with the free version is it no longer has chat history. And I don't know if that's going to be if that's going to change. I don't know if it isn't. So every time you talk to, to it, it does, it has no recollection of those conversations. So if you've been using it, you know that, hey, when, it's very difficult to kind of get back to what I refer to uh, when I talk to, I call it David, by the way. We So I'm just going to call ChatGPT David. Uh, I'm a big uh, Alien franchise fan. So if you know Alien, uh, the, the big AI in that is, is David. And uh, that's what we decided when we were talking. I was like, what, what should we call you? Like, I, I really, like, I'm not really vibing with ChatGPT. And it's like, I don't have a preference. Call me whatever. And I said, all right, how about we you know, pick top, top, top 10 from like, you know, cultural references. And it literally just picked top 10 AIs. And uh, I was like, all right, we'll go with David. So you're David now. So anyway, so David, David will not remember anything now, right now. Uh, if, if you go, if you go and talk to him and um, you're going to have to start over, that's very difficult. And there is no way to get it to access the data to those past conversations, even though it has it stored somewhere, it doesn't, it's not able to do it. So it, it's only going to be able to reference the current conversation. And I've seen actually seen errors in those current conversations. So here's a couple of things I've noticed with working with ChatGPT. So one is you're starting over every time. So uh, if if you are currently working on a project and that's a limitation, I would say make sure you're saving your chat histories, which is a little tedious, but go save your chat histories. And then what you can do is now kind of use that as a way to refresh David's memory about where you left off with the conversation. You know, it's almost like Memento. If you've ever seen the, mo the movie Memento and the main character, he has a short-term memory loss, right? And he can't, he can't, he has no idea where he is. And I don't want to spoil the movie for you. I haven't seen it, but you know, he, he, he's always constantly forgetting where, what just happened and things like that. And so that's kind of what David is like right now. But uh, there is a, a, a way to kind of get, circumvent that a little bit, which is, copying your chat history and what I do now at the, uh, because sometimes it'll just randomly cut out as well. Okay. So you want to make sure you're, you know, kind of keeping up. And one of the things I'll do is I, I'll say, Hey, can you re recap this conversation and create a prompt for me so that I can remind you of where we left off and it'll kind of do okay. And, uh, but sometimes I'm like, I, I don't think there's enough context here. Are you really going to be able to understand what we were talking about? You know? And, uh, so really get it to be a little bit thorough. Uh, I have also noticed one of the, the errors besides just kind of mistakes in the algorithm, it will sometimes not be able to correctly assess the current conversation that it's having. 
So I don't know what's going on with that because that seems like something new where I'll say, do you understand this? Because that is not what this means. It, it'll just make things up sometimes. That That's usually where I catch it. I kind of catch it in an assumption, you know, and with incorrect information. And I'll, I'll say, you know, what, what was that? And we just talked about this like five prompts ago and it, and it just couldn't refer back to it, you know? And you can be explicit and say like, this is very important. I need you to like, remember this in the conversation. So when you're more explicit, it'll remember. Uh, so that's one, one error I've noticed is it'll, it'll forget things. It's like you were having a conversation with a friend. It's like, I just told you, I just told you this. Don't you remember? You know, were you listening to me? I don't know if you ever heard that in conversation. Are you really listening to me? You know, are you just like thinking about something else? And uh, that's what, that's one thing. The other thing is, I don't know if you guys have tried this, but if you ask it the same thing, sometimes you get different output. So sometimes I've, I've asked, I've given it the same prompt like three times. And I get three different answers. And I say, what is the, what is the, the, the variation in your, in your answers here? And it'll say, well, on the first one, I just tried to do kind of, you know, a basic response. And the second one, I tried to do it, but I did, you know, I put this little spin on it. And then the third one, I put this. So it's constantly like just trying to figure out what you want. It's, David's very agreeable and he's trying to do his best to, uh, give you the response that he thinks you want. So it can change. So anyway, those are some of the little quirks and some of the little things I've noticed just working with it recently. Nice, nice. Love it, yeah. love it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, Colin, let's talk about uh, stages of becoming a great marketer. Considering okay. uh, that we have AI today, it's not the same that uh, marketers uh, didn't have such tool. And uh, for example, if you started today from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills, considering AI and other technologies, uh, share these stages. You promise one more stage, like eight stages. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think you're working on the eighth stage, yeah. Uh, well, if you work for any competing e-bike company, I think all you have to do is go to ChatGPT and say, please make me a marketing plan. And then just use that and stick to that. Don't do anything else. Uh, and we'll, and we'll be fine. That'll be, that'll work great for you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I actually haven't done that. I probably should go, Hey, maybe somebody can do that. Say, just ask chat GPT for a marketing plan. It's probably, maybe you need a little bit more specifics in there. So, um, yeah, so I'll talk a little bit more. Yeah. Like what the heck is the stages of a marketer thing? And I, this is something I started developing, I think about a year ago. And it's kind of one of those, uh, I'm just an entrepreneur and kind of like really creative in nature. And I will, kind of start a lot of ideas and I, I will kind of like throw ideas in like a, like a one note or something. So this was one of those ideas was the stages of a marketer. And I kind of worked it out and I started thinking and, and really where it came from was I started thinking about my journey as a marketer, you know, I'm like 10 years in the game now, I think at this point and kind of like when I started and like to where I, where I was like currently at and, you know, obviously I want to keep growing. So there may be, you might keep adding stages. I think at a certain point you're, uh, you're going in a circle a little bit. I think most things are either, uh, bell curves or circles. So we can talk about that, but so that's kind of where this idea started. And I kind of like started going through and I, I created these stages. I'm like, oh, there's about seven stages here. Right. And, uh, maybe, maybe eight, I think now eight or nine. And, and so then I said, okay, this is really interesting. And I said, wow, a lot of people get stuck in some of these stages, you know, and I realized that how, how easy it is to get stuck. And if any marketers ever felt like stuck in their marketing or they don't know where to go or just things aren't working anymore, they definitely got stuck in one of these stages, you know, and it is possible that you did ascend <laughs> or whatever you got to the, the ninth stage where I don't know, you're beyond me at that point. You can tell me what, what to do, but I think you, you return, you, you, you kind of go back again and, and you have to, uh, kind of, kind of start over in a way. Uh, but, but anytime you need to, you're getting to a point where things are, you're either stuck in one of those early stages, or even if you're about to finish a bell curve, like, like a new company, right? Like when a new startup starts, uh, and that you, you've peaked and then you've, you, now it's a bell curve and you're going to come down. That's when it's like, well, are you going to innovate and change and restart a bell curve? Or are you going to go downhill? And that's why you see companies fail. That's why you see careers. Everything is, is, is a bell curve. I remember, I'll never forget Rick Warren. And I didn't fully understand what he was saying at the time. Uh, he used to be the pastor of a, a, a church up in uh, a little bit northern, north of here called Saddleback Church. Um, and he said, everything is a bell curve. I didn't fully understand what he meant, but 
he said basically like at the end of the bell curve, if you don't start a new bell curve, the bell curve goes down. And if you've ever studied statistics and standard deviation, and, and if, you, if you're doing any CRO, you'll see that, that everything is a bell curve. And there's this, uh, I don't want to get too deep into this, but it is, it is important to know. Um, if, if you read, uh, the drunkard's walk explains this really well. It kind of just explains numbers and this, like this law of randomness that applies to our lives. And, and one of them is this bell curve. So, uh, and you can do it with like any data set pretty much. There's going to be that standard deviation. And, uh, so that's kind of how you can get out of that part of like either being stuck or going downhill and ending is to restart the bell curve in a way. And that's and that's a change. And that's probably what the last stage is. It's like some sort of transformation. So you're gonna have to transform as a marketer and um, you have to, to help your, your customers transform as well into something new and change and restart their bell curves. So that's probably the, uh, I'm, I'm spoiling the ending here, but I think all good stories uh, give a little taste of what the ending is when they start. So that's kind of a little, bit of backgrounds with a little bit of a rabbit trail uh in, into into numbers of, of kind of what these stages are but we can kind of talk through them you know at a high level that's that's pretty much what this is and then i returned and started working on it a little bit more uh really this last month when i started meeting interns and digital marketing graduates who were fresh out of school and i realized they were just starting this first stage and i said oh no i gotta help them so yeah, that's nice. Kind of, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, what can, what kind of advice can you give to uh, new marketers? Because you know, I still get the question: um, SEO is dead because chats can replace SEO, can replace digital marketing, AI can replace us. So, what do you think uh, about the future? What kind of future will be, and how to adapt today to this possible future in marketing? Yeah, so I do think we are in a very exciting time. I think we're yeah. going to be in one of the most disruptive times ever with 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 the emergence of AI. Um, I almost feel like it's one of those things where you know if if the uh, if the shoe shine boy is giving you stock tips, it's time to get out, right? That's kind of what they always say, and I almost feel like it's like that with with ChatGPT, right? Once um, general population is is you know once your grandma starts using chat gpt like you know you're you're it, like it's dead okay mm -hmm. that, that that's a good indicator right when you're like people who aren't mark like people who aren't marketers and people are just like i'm i'm sending emails with, with chat gpt that's <laughs> my horrible <laughs> grandma voice i'm uh, son i i, I sunny uh sending emails with chat gpt it's you know whatever right i, I can't do a grandma puppet voice right now it's a little too early for that mm -hmm. but uh once that happens you know it's like it is, it is fully dead and that's the best time to go all right what can we do like because you you might be still playing it a little safe and if you play it safe with your messaging with your content the safer you play it the closer to chat gpt vanilla it's going to be so you might be like madagascar bean vanilla and it's like okay you're only a couple degrees away from that so you want to be like double chocolate chunk you know or, or just like you know rainbow cotton candy i don't know you want to be something like a 180 or 90 degrees or 45 degrees away from this right and i get like some b2b stuff you got to be a little serious but i think every we're, we're all human and we all have the human condition we all like to laugh we all like to be entertained we like to be captivated whatever we attend to is is, is going to be who we are and so if you really want to influence your customers you need to know what they care about what they're attending to and then focus on that because where their attention already is, that's where you can be, right? It's a lot easier to just be where they're spending their time and spending their attention rather than trying to like capture it and pull it away, right? And if you think about that on a micro level, that's how marketing works. That's how these platforms work. They want to keep them on platforms. You go, okay, I know that YouTube, for example, wants to keep them on platform. So I'm going to work with that. I'm going to create my content into 
playlists and things that are easily consumable, so they stay on platform, and then now they're consuming my content. Okay, that's just like a micro example of that. So that's just one way is uh, figure out kind of what your audience really cares about um, and then create the content around that. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's really all what matters is, is your, your customer, your prospects, what they're interested in and um, and helping them, them solve their goals, make their lives better. So Nice, nice. You, you remind me Mr. Beast you know, once he shared yeah. an interview about how he learned YouTube and he told, uh he spent so much time like 10 hours a day watching videos he watched videos uh in order to understand why people love these videos why people spend time watching these videos why people uh leave comments likes on these videos so he didn't learn youtube algorithms he didn't learn how to cheat the system how to manipulate the system but he spent time to learn why people love these videos and i see you know when marketers uh, companies uh try to figure out you know how all grips work you can't you can't you can't uh, understand uh i don't know how many all grips we know about 200 all grips in google but uh, google uh provides seven thousand changes each year a lot and sometimes People in Google don't understand how AI can create uh, or rank websites because it's uh, AI, it's a, a complex mechanism. But if you can understand why people want to get this content, why you can help support them, so then algorithms will love you like Mr. Beast. So can you tell about how to learn it, how to learn uh what kind of content uh, your customers and uh, people want to get because you know once i got the message uh, from one master who told me he lost 400 000 traffic but he didn't lose any sales so he got a lot of traffic without sales uh, because uh, he created uh, content that customers don't need uh, probably his customers uh it depends so uh, we need to think more about not uh, traffic we need to think about traffic value how you can unite this traffic with your customers because if you get this traffic and can't sell well, i don't think you need this traffic so any insights how to do it <laughs> yeah i love that he, he upped his conversion rates you know i i saw this uh <laughs> This this funny post on LinkedIn the other day reminds me of that, and it was it was kind of like, um, what are some great like bad tips to increase your conversion rate? You know, and you know, one of them was like, well, just like drop your traffic by half, you know, or something like that. Your conversion rates are gonna go up, right? Uh, and mine was like, well, just put your tracking pixel on your homepage. Now every hit is a conversion, instant hundred percent conversion rate. Uh, and then I said, uh, nobody comment or follow anything. Uh, I don't want you to do that. Boom, my call to action, instant 100% conversion rate, done, so easy. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, that that is kind of one of the key things is, okay, how do you figure out what your customer wants and, um, and how to deliver it, right? Good question. And I say that's probably a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I think you're getting now to about, honestly, about stage six at that point. Mm-hmm. Nice. I really, I really do think it takes about that long, and and we can talk a little bit about what those other five stages are. But once you get into stage six and you're doing experimentation, which is like, hey, now I'm testing my messages, and I'm seeing what resonates with my audience, and I'm learning more about how my customers think and how they behave. Then I think you're in about stage six, in that experimentation stage as a marketer. Uh, and, and you're seeing more and more people are, are making it there or they're realizing that they need to be there. So they're either, you know, hiring agencies or they're doing consulting, you know, with, with CRO experts and things like that, um, because they realize the, the power of, of testing like that. So testing is one way that you can learn what, what resonates, because otherwise, how do you know? It's based off of your experience, your intuition, your gut. Uh, maybe you're copying your competitors. Um, you're seeing what other people are doing. You're just doing whatever chat GPT tells you to do. 
But unless you actually test those things, you don't know. And, and I'll share with you just something I recently did uh, because coming into a new a, a new company and a new industry and and uh, and e-commerce specifically, I'm trying to figure out who my customers are. So one of the, one of the things we did is we looked at reviews, and that's a great way to see find the value proposition, find the unique selling proposition. A lot of times people just give it to you. Like, I love this product. Here's why. Here's why I bought it. Like, they'll tell you. They're, just, they're so excited. They're just, you know, uh, they'll also tell you why they hate it, right? People love to give give feedback. So um, you can also do interviews. Customer interviews are very powerful. Uh, Talia Wolf is a, a, a great expert that has very good content around um not only leveraging emotion for conversions, but also how to do good customer interviews. And there's some other frameworks out there as well. And I'm going to be working with uh, my friend Anne here, who's I'm going to get to see kind of how she does interviews and might might do a little bit of collaboration there. Uh, she said uh, Social Squib just talked to her yesterday, so that that that'll be great. So one of the ways is you know to do those interviews, but really it comes down to testing those messages. So to to share with you one of the things I thought so. We did a test on our homepage. Okay, so we're we're kind of undergoing a lot of a lot of things. We have a lot of big changes that are going to be coming up later this year for the brand. But um, you know, obviously the homepage gets a lot of traffic. So I said, okay. Right now we've got all these products on the homepage. You know, we need to put a couple steps in here. You know, in front of this because people don't know which what bike they would. They don't just come to our site and they're ready to buy a bike. This is a big buying decision, right? We have bikes that are. You know, I think our our least expensive bike is maybe $1,500 right now. And that's probably about a, you know, think things are a little bit on sale right now. We're about to get right into bike season. That's probably about a $2,000 bike. That's a, that's a big buying decision. You know, even a thousand dollars. That's I, I personally, that's a lot of money for me. That's, that's a big buying decision. I don't just drop a thousand bucks. So, uh, and that's either like a new toy or that's a new hobby or that's a new endeavor, unless you're like a cyclist. So, you know, it's a big buying decision. So that means there's probably going to be some steps there. You're not just like uh, clicking a, you know, a refill button on Amazon. And so we put in um, a little bit of a, you know, uh, category section. So people would know kind of like the bikes are in categories, very, very simple things. Right. But these are kind of some of the things that should be on the homepage. You know, uh, we put in a little bit of a brand value proposition and uh, we changed a couple other sections and, and we removed some sections. Uh, mm -hmm. It lost miserably the variant page lost miserably compared to the yeah. regular homepage and the reason is right so so that's that's interesting to because that shouldn't have happened in my opinion I'm like why is that happening because the only reason why that would happen is if people are more motivated than i thought and the traffic that's getting to our site is already ready to purchase and i'm actually mm -hmm. getting in the way at that point because i'm adding you know loops and so I looked at, you know, kind of like those paths on the website, because if I don't figure out why that happened, then I'm I'm not good at my job. I'm not a good marketer. I'm not a good tester because I need to know why that happened. Otherwise, I can't act on it. You know, if I just go, oh, well, that didn't work. All right. Well, let's try something else. You know, uh, we're in trouble. So when I looked at the data, it seemed like about 25 percent of that traffic already knew what they wanted. So they were hitting the page. That means a couple things. Right. One get out of their way you just want to let them get to where they need to get so they can make that purchase and two they're a returning customer or very hot you know super hot lead they are already familiar with our site so when you show them a rat this is a radical re you show them radical redesign there's a probably a layer of uh anxiety there there's like a little bit of you're like wait where am i am i in the right place that's the first question people ask when they get to to, to a new landing page they click an ad, they click an email, they hit 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 a page that hopefully ties to whatever they clicked and delivers on whatever they it, it said it would. And they go, where am I? Am I in the right place? Mm -hmm. And hopefully you can answer that question right away. And they were getting there. They were like, wait a second. I'm This picture is different. And I you would see people going back and refreshing the page, things like that. So you could tell like there's there some indicators that they, were, they thought maybe they were a little, little bit lost. And then now there's some extra steps and it's a little bit harder for them to get to where they want to go. But a lot of them were going directly to the, to what they wanted and then checking out. So we said, okay, our next step and what we're doing now is uh, we, we could have went about three different ways uh, for the next test. And we said, let's look at the homepage and let's redact 
sections that we think might be hurting conversions. So we did that. We've already increased time on site by 25%. So that's a good indicator. And then we'll check check the results today. And it might take a few days to get some results. But I just wanted to share that. It's like, hey, um, even as a, uh, I try to be the best tester I can, I'm, my goal is to be better than 50%, right? Because people who don't know what they're doing, even they're, they're probably a coin flip most of the time. So if I can get better than a coin flip, that's great, you know, and the higher I can get, the better I am at my job, you know, uh, if you look at anybody who's like doing any sort of progression, anything, you just have to be a little bit above 50% and you can climb. So it's kind of like that with testing and, and, and being a CRO expert, but obviously the higher uh, you can get, or you can see things, you know, I know. Okay. So that's, that's an example of a, of a failed test, but it's only a failure if we don't learn from it and we're not able to act on it. So as long as you learn from it, it's, it's not a fail. Okay. But but the uh, the hypothesis was proven incorrect, okay, is a better way to say it. But you can do that, make sure you're learning from it. And then the other thing you can do is uh, continue to, to reiterate. But as long as you're, you're a little bit above 50%, you know, uh, you're going to be better, you know. Um, but, you know, there was another test I did uh, right off the bat. And I was like, yeah, there's no way this doesn't work, right? Well, it was an instant like 250% lift. So once you start to know what works in general, you can kind of apply that to any brand, apply that to any industry, uh, because these things don't change. And uh, once you know kind of what you're trying to leverage, but I just didn't have the right idea about the the traffic that was hitting the site. Now that means that there's a lot of opportunity to to bring in a lot more traffic that's a little bit you know colder or just not quite aware you know, and, and kind of get them to opt in in different ways and have content for them. But as far as the people right now, I just had to get out of their way. So nice. I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I love to share kind of examples and, and, and stories. And that one's coming real. Cause that just happened, uh, you know, like two days ago. So nice. Yeah. I, I love it. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Colin, I have the question about, you, you mentioned many times about testing, about experiment. And uh, I usually track how many times you can pronounce something but i lost my track after um, many times about uh, such words and i think it's important in marketing about uh testing uh failing uh, i think you can fail you can learn uh how things work and uh, i remember mark zuckerberg said about that the biggest risk is not to take the risk so we need to uh, make a risk we need to uh learn from that we need to uh, test experiment uh but i see content creators and marketers give up uh, because they can't get results uh so uh, for example they um, uh, i think most content creators don't start uh then uh, according to a few studies uh, people don't record the second episode of podcast don't film the second video uh, don't write the second article because they can't get results from the first piece of content personally i don't know how to do it i don't know anyone who got great results uh, from first article video any uh, type of content uh, even mr beast he uh, filmed videos for an year and a half to get first thousand subscribers pewdiepie uh, filmed 100 videos to get 285 subscribers today these guys have plus 100 million subscribers a lot so can you tell about testing how to test in the right way uh fail time to time but uh, to find the right way what actually will work for you yeah yeah great question uh you're absolutely right so I, about about um starting anything right like where it's like oh yeah you start that one blog or and people i think just expect it to work They're like well i did or I, they make it be, i did what mr b said why did it, oh yeah why didn't it work or whatever i did what all these people said and it's like yeah the the truth is they they did you know anybody who was successful it's like well they wrote like nine books before that or something you know that did nothing it's like i i've got two books i've written that are in the trunk right or i've got this or that or you know i finally had a youtube video uh and i got over that thousand or whatever uh it was a you know i'll tell you what i did it was it was a content gap there was a massive content gap and i had discovered something that uh was really good that people were going to want to know and i perfected it and i knew i had the ability to create a good video guiding people through the through this difficult thing uh, because I, I and I, and I learned like 
everything about it. Like I fully optimized this, this, and it, it was a gaming thing, uh, but I fully optimized this route because <clears throat> everybody wants to learn how to like, in a game, to like level up fast. And I optimized this like power leveling route. And I said, well, there's a massive gap. There's no content for this. People are going to want to know how to do this. So I made a video about it and it just blew up. And I had a little fun, fun thing there for a month. And I was like, well, I don't want to do this because I can't just edit for 20 hours a day. Anyway, side, side story. But I had been making little videos and stuff in, in, for years, but it wasn't until like I recognized this, you know, I was like, oh, let me just do this. And I had done this before with other things. And it just uh, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't that big, but this was just something that like, it was a, t it was timing. So a lot of times it's timing and that's what happens a lot of times with customers too. It's like, right message at the right time and you just happen to be there and boom then then they're gonna they're gonna activate and they're gonna convert but to answer your question how to get better at testing um you know i look at like what all the top cro experts are doing i look at you know all the uh different frameworks and in general what you what you end up finding out is everybody's kind of doing the same thing <clears throat> excuse me they might just like call it something different or they use different language you know like you might say unique selling proposition i might say value proposition but ultimately like the it's all the same it just comes down to answering the question why is the customer going to choose you over your competitors if it's a product right why are they going to buy from your brand rather than another brand it's like it always comes down to that why question and answering that why question for them, right? So I talked about one of the questions that they ask when they hit a page, which is where am I? So right there, one of the things you can do is ensure that they get to the right page. So if you have ads that you're spending money on, which I'm sure you do, and you have ads that are going to pages, hopefully they're going to the right pages. There's still people yeah. that send traffic to the wrong place and they'll have an ad for something that I, I still see them and there's things I'm interested in. I'm like, oh, that's something new. I'm going to click that. And I'm like, I have no idea where I am. You know, I clicked on a, uh, I'm, just, I'm making this up, but I, I, I did buy a lightsaber. Okay. So I'm not quite making this up, but this specific thing didn't happen. I'm like, oh, here's a picture of a lightsaber. All right. I, I like lightsabers. I'm going to click it and I go. And then it's like, I'm looking at, you know, a, a gun or something, right. I'm looking at a blaster. It's like, uh, wait, I was, where's the lightsaber? I'm not, I don't think I'm in the right spot. And then now I have to decide because this was just something random. I clicked maybe on Facebook or from a social media ad. Now I have to decide, is it worth the effort? Is it worth the cost for me to now go try to find where the lightsaber is on this website, which may or may not be an easy task and then do it. And the answer is probably no. So if you see high bounce rate, that's a good indicator that that's probably not working. Whatever they expected when they clicked, they did not, you did not deliver on the expectation. So that the one thing is answering that question, make sure it's in the right spot. So if they're, if it's something where it's, you know, let's just stay, stay in e-commerce for a minute. If it's, if it's purses that better go to the like purses, you know, section that for the purses product, that category, right? Whatever it is, if it's shoes, whatever it is, you know, if it's a specific product, better go to that specific product page. Don't go, well, we're going to send them to the home page. And they're, no, 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 no. They, they click that because they want to go there. And that's what they expect. So, whatever expectation you set up, you want to over, you always want to over deliver. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, whatever expectation, you, you better at least meet it and then hopefully over deliver. But make sure that they go into the right place. That's one. The second question is like, how do they feel about it? So there's there's ways that you can increase trust, increase transparency, um, especially like in our industry. You know, they want to know that they're they're buying a bike from a, tr a trusted brand. It's like when, when you buy a bike, when you buy a car, like what do they think about some of the things that you care about? It's like I want to make sure this thing is going to break. I want to make you know what do, what do I got to do to take care of it? Make sure it's you know going to work properly. Can I trust this company? Is it a good product? Is it just a you know piece of junk from from a shelf? Yeah. Uh, overseas and that you know and so these are some of the questions and then but that ultimate question like why should i buy this and why should i buy it from you that's the big one that's the value proposition that's got to be clear so clarity uh honesty um helping them feel like uh helping them ensure they're in the right place helping them feel good about it um those are all those are all some things that you can do uh to help kind of like 
start thinking about what you should test. Because uh, a lot of times you probably have things there that shouldn't be there that you can easy, easily remove. And I'll say one more thing. Uh, whatever the goal of that page is, it should be laser beam focused on that. So, so one of the first things you could do is just start removing things that have nothing to do with the goal. Do you have like sections of the page that have to you're like oh well we want to let them know about this and we want to let them know about this and we want to you know give them our social media we want to give them it's like no 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 those are all distractions you don't want them going to your social media to follow you you want them purchasing their product or taking that action whatever that goal of that page is should be laser beam focused on that goal and uh don't put things in the way and distractions in place of where you want your customer to go Nice, nice. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Colin, I have the final question about uh, can you list three things, only three, uh, what any marketers should do today? Um, let's summarize all our discussion and only three things that you think it's very important for any marketers to do today. Uh, one is learn who your customer is. That's, that's mm -hmm. probably one of the most important things. And, um, and that's really what comes, what it comes down to, because if you don't know who they are, what they want, what keeps them up at night, what gets them excited, what they spend their time doing, what they attend to, what they're focused on, um, how can you ever talk to them in a real way and help them out? And um, how are you going to solve their problems? And if, you, if your, your product or service does solve a problem for, for them, how are you going to be able to communicate that to them and, and make them know about that in a way that they're going to understand and they're going to engage with and pay attention to? Because everybody's trying to do that. And, um, and if they're not familiar with you, you have to develop trust. It's, it, it really is a relationship. And you'll, talk, you'll see people that are like all about, it's, like, it's, it's relationship marketing. It's relationship and um, relationships are built on trust. Um, some of them are built on mutual benefit. You know, there's there's value exchanges, things like that. But you know, ultimately, it's 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 learning about your customer. And there's some good ways to do that. We talked about some of those ways. Um, you know, another one is to to be to be testing, to be testing that messaging. So you might have an idea of what your customer wants. You might have an idea of of where they're at. So then you have to start start testing those things. Um, and I think the third thing is, is to don't be, especially right now, you know, we talked to, you talked a little bit about risk, you know, and, and it was reminds me of that Gretzky quote that gets thrown around all the time. It's like, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, uh, but you gotta be willing to take risks too. And, um, so, you know, what, whatever that looks like for your company, whether it's like starting something new, whatever that looks like in your marketing, whether it's maybe trying a new platform you're like, Oh, we're scared of TikTok. We're scared of this or there. I think a lot of times marketers are like scared to mess up, you know? And I, I think that can kind of hamstring you. So, uh, be a little, uh, we're naturally probably, uh, more risk averse. So, um, just maybe even think about what are some, some things you can do that, uh, that might be a risk for you. It might be a risk for, for your marketing and see what happens. I mean, you know, we, we took some last week. We're like, we're just going to try this. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and it ended up working. It ended up doing well. But uh, it was a risk. And, uh, you know, we all signed off on it. We all ag agreed on it. And we did it. And, uh, you know, it, it, there, there, were some, there were some downsides to it. But overall, it was in general, it was, it was, it was successful. So uh, those are the kind of the three things. And then, um, yeah, we kind of recap. Or I can give just maybe very high level. I know we're almost out of time. Just kind of those, those seven stages. Uh, we talked yeah, about Yeah, sure. some, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Okay, sure. So stage one is like when you when you just come in and you just start marketing, or this could be if you're the business owner, or whatever, it's like the awareness and the it's the awareness of they realize you need to learn how to market to get your business noticed, uh, or what to do. Uh, their your brand's invisible, you need help. And that's where a lot of the either like new entrepreneurs, even new marketers, if they work at a company, they go, oh, okay, nobody knows about our brand. Okay, so I just have to, you know, uh we don't exist. We don't exist in the minds of our potential customers, right? So that's stage one is like that aware that awareness of that. Cause some people don't even know that they need marketing. They've just or they've been doing some sort of uh, especially if they're like a entrepreneur or a solopreneur, they've been doing some sort of marketing or some something has been 
helping their business be successful, but they realize they to, to grow or to scale or to, to move, they need to, they need to do some marketing. So there's an awareness stage. There's kind of the megaphone stage. And you've seen this before, I'm sure. Uh, you, you see this on LinkedIn all the time where uh, this, this is pretty much megaphone where they just in your inbox, they're just blasting, right? And it's almost like sales sales tactics. They're just trying to like get frequency, I think, which is like they're just getting the word out, but there's no strategy. There's no consideration for their prospects or their potential customers. And you're just blasting out messages with little results. And uh, that's kind of like the megaphone stage, right? So like they're, they're, you're, you're, and then you're, you're kind of going to be, you almost like go from like, you know, nothing. And then you're just like, buy my stuff. And then you end up becoming like the ShamWow guy kind of thing, you know? Um, third stage is uh, stagnation or transition. And I think a lot of people, so this is one of those transitory stages. People can get stuck here. They either like double down on their marketing message with even more disregard for their audience and the results. Uh, or they start beginning to learn common best practices and kind of get mixed results. So they're doing a little more research. They're looking at competitors, kind of studying things, or they just like double down. They're like, no, 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 just keep blasting. We're going to keep blasting. Okay. Stage four is they get more into that kind of cookie cutter stage, right? We see a lot of people like, I'm going to follow the best practices. And then they're going to get limited results with kind of the templates and strategies that they're using. And this is where you're going to see, I think, a lot of people settle with ChatGPT because they're going to go, oh, ChatGPT, blah, 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 boom, boom. It's going to get more cookie cutter. It's going to get more bland. Uh, people are just going to copy, copy, copy. You're like, how many times does you ever see those memes that keep getting <laughs> keep getting passed down? You're like, I don't know how many pixels this is, but eventually this just gets down to like three pixels. You know, it's just it's, <laughs> it's been copy and pasted and reshared so many times. So it loses its punch, right? Um, so that's where a lot of people, I think, are going to get stuck. Stage five is another like kind of, uh, this is like an adaptation. So this is where you're now building on kind of those templates. You're like, I'm adapting these best practices. And you're utilizing them to fit better with your audience based on the results you're getting. So you're almost starting to, you're not quite like testing and experimenting, but you're realizing that you can kind of put a little bit of a flavor on those best practices that are out there to make them make them work for your audience a little bit. And then stage six, we talked a little bit about that. That's where you get into experimenting. Now you're like, okay, I need to test my messages and see what's resonating with my audience and then learn more about how my customers think and behave. And now I can start to, you know, create content that they care about and they're paying attention to. And then if you get to stage seven, now you're innovating. Now you're using what you're learning about your customers and you're creating and leveraging new methods to reach message and provide value for your audience that are unique to their mindset and, and what they need in their lives. Uh, and then stage eight is, is like another transformational stage. So you have, I think about what, three transformational stages there. And this is where now you're enabling your audience to be able to embrace a radical change that'll transform their life forever, which means you're, you're, you've now changed. And it's like, you're, you're, this is like the, if it was the hero's journey, this is now like the return. It's like you're returning with the elixir and uh, you're transformed, and now you're transforming the world around you and uh, your customers and their world. And uh, so I'm, I'm kind of leaning more into the to, to mythology and storytelling for this one, but I think this is where you kind of complete the circle. And uh, this is really where, you know, you kind of help people change lives. And you see a lot of like marketers that they get this and they realize that they're taking their customers on a journey uh, where they're trying to change them. And usually it's like the changes from where they're at to where they want to be. And they're like, hey, come do this thing. Come buy this thing or, you know, come take this weight loss program. This is going to get you to where you want to go. And so that's kind of like one example of the starting point. But that's more of them starting the journey. This is now, hey, you've now changed into something else. And I'm making you aware of what's already happened. So it's a little bit different. Again, I'm still working on that last stage, uh, but that's uh, don't want to get too philosophical. But that's kind of where we're at. I hope that makes sense. Kind of some of the progression. Um, yeah. So there you go. There, there's, there's okay, no guys. You know, guys, if you want to know the last stage, the update of the last stage, you need to follow Colin on social media, you know, and you can get this last stage. Colin, tell the best way how to learn more about you, how to follow you, how to reach out to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not selling anything. 
I have nothing. Uh, I, I have nothing that I that I need you to buy or follow. I mean, if you're interested, if if if, if you like this content, if it's resonating with you, if you're interested in learning more, I'm always happy to to talk to people. I might be creating a curriculum actually for catered more towards like new entrepreneurs who are starting businesses and and uh, and new grads actually to kind of help them. Really, my goal is to like accelerate people to like six or seven, like rapidly so they don't get stuck in those early stages and they don't it doesn't take them like 10 years to get there you know because you don't have time for that so um so that's my goal there but if, if you're interested in that i think probably linkedin is is really where I, where i hang out the most we can connect connect there so you just follow me on linkedin um you know if you actually send me a real message and you're not trying to increase my leads or sales uh which probably have a real conversation um and, and we'll see what we can do i might actually start doing some things on volley uh, there is some good like fractional CMO stuff. So I, I might throw some stuff in there. So if you are interested in like talking or you need some consulting, that's something that I'll be able to do rapidly. And I guarantee you that like a 20 minute or 10 minute, like uh, highly targeted towards your problem or issue or what you're facing uh, piece of content will be like really really powerful so I, I might start working on that because I, I think people really like those things and i can see how it's like wow you can really transform businesses with like very short um practical steps that they can take so uh that's not that's not quite going but if that's something you guys are interested let me know and, and we can set something up like that that's something i can do real easily nice nice guys you can find the links uh to call it in the profile in the description below you can find the guy with Hamlet and sunglasses, you know, on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, a little more from Colin. You can see a lot of valuable insights. Colin, it's a big pleasure. I love it. Uh, so valuable for me, for my audience. Uh, I'm pretty sure people will follow you because they can see a lot of valuable insights. Okay, guys, love you. See you. Thanks, Anatoly. Great being here. <laughs>